Hi, hello, greetings. How are you today? Today I have an other reading wrap up for you. This time round it is a look back on February and what I read in February 2020. Before I go into the books themselves, I would like to give you some statistics. So all in all, I read 11 books uh, in the month of February 2020. Five of them were audiobooks. Then I read two arcs that came on my Kindle. I read a physical book and I read the other two books were also uh, digital books that I either got had on the Kindle or then got from my local library on the digital loan. Uh, again, it was mostly filled with fantasy February and uh, I had another fantastic reading month, I would say. Now let's get right into the books themselves. The first book I finished in February is A Sprinkle of Sorcery. This is the second book of A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. I read A, a Pinch of Magic last year. I loved it. It has fantastic cover and I would say A Sprinkle of Sor Sorcery is as gorgeous and lovely as the first book was. In the second book we see again the three Wittershin sisters setting out on the adventure. This time we are really out on the sea. We travel around in the waters, uh, discover islands, discover more magic and and the sisters actually get to deal with witches and pirates and all kind and sorts of people. I absolutely, utterly enjoyed reading this book. It is a fantastic adventure and what Michelle Harrison did in this second book so very well again is she put so many interesting subjects into this storyline with representation, with themes of growing up, with being siblings, having younger, older sisters, etc. And then also the social constructs, etc. It is so, so fantastically done. I really absolutely enjoyed reading this book. And the second book I finished is an audiobook I listened to from a local library. This is also a second book in a series. The series is entitled The Dragon Keeper. The series has been written by Carol Wilkinson. And the storyline takes us to ancient China, about 600 before our era. In the first book we meet this slave girl that does not even have a name, who becomes a dragon keeper. In the first book and in the second book we see what happens further we turn the dragons and the emperor and the mischief and the people who really try to get hold of this dragon because dragon scales are very very valuable and it is a lot there is also a lot about relationships um, about building relationships uh, about learning to trust each other about following your intuition your understanding of what is right and what is wrong and this series is has I would think this series is going to be an all-time favorite series for myself it is so well written to, to be very clear this is a book that is ha, has a very slow pacing there isn't much sometimes not much happening outside but the whole descriptions and the world and the characters and the relationship between these characters it is just, it was such a treat to listen to this on audiobook. And I'm very, very glad that my, lo that my local library has these audiobooks available because currently here in the UK, the titles are very, very difficult to actually get hold of in a physical copy. The next book I read is an, in novella form and this is Snow Spelled. This is the Harwood Spellbooks, book one, written by Stephanie Burgess. Uh, this is about human and fairy uh, relationships uh, in a world that is an alternate England in the book in the story it is entitled England and it just was such a fantastic read uh, and it just was hilarious scary at points uh, you have really uh, scary characters on the other hand you have this young woman who lost all her prospects of what she actually wanted to do in her life um, she messed up there quite a bit and now has got to find another purpose in her life and she does so because as Stephanie Burgess has also posted recently um, she wants this series to be an entertaining series and a series that has happy endings and I absolutely utterly enjoyed it. It is an adult book by all means and I really enjoy to read the, the perspective of all these characters, the setup of the story in this castle, in this huge mansion somewhere there nearby the fairy folk and then the sinister machinations of some of the inhabitants 
of either of these two kingdoms. Absolutely loved it and absolutely enjoyed it. Eventually, I made it through Xiang. That is the Empire of Salt series, book two, written by C.F.E. Goulden. I really struggled to get through this book. I started to read it sometime last, last I think in, in autumn possibly, something like that. I let it go, I, but then I feel like I wanted to finish it because the third book came out and I felt like there's something to this series I really want to read and I want to know what how the story ends. And in the second book I really struggled because three quarters of this book could as, as well have not been there. I, I just was bored um, and it was this male posing of kind of, of um, being better and being stronger and it just went on and on and on and on and then you have these repetitions of everybody doing the same journey and it at some point I felt a bit annoyed with it but on the other hand there were two uh, characters storylines that went also through this book and those two I love absolutely and utterly loved I'm glad I'm done now with this book and obviously I will then also see at some point to get hold of the third book in the series to see how the story actually ends the magical system and the concepts behind it are very very intriguing and I really want to see what happens in this last book of this trilogy and then Finally, we talk about the one book, physical book that I read, and this is a book I got hold of from my local library as well, and this is The Falconer by Elizabeth May. I got hold of this book due to the recommendations of Sarah Chain, and this is for the first book that I really had this experience of. I just wanted to get back to this book because the, the cover of this book is just stunning, and it is yummy, and you just want to get back to it and... and continue reading this book. The book is also be very beautifully designed and the storyline itself, it's steampunk, it has human uh, fire relationships. In itself, I love the storyline. It is uh, situated in Scotland and I just loved it. I love this, this mix-up of uh, 19th century Scotland, England, uh, like the how people behave and the whole setup in the in the court and society etc and then on the, on the other hand these completely different inventions and inventions that have been made and the technology that has advanced on some levels as well so I really love this mix and I plan to actually continue with this series at some point it remains to be seen if and when but for now I really I've, I'm quite intrigued and I also would like to see how these storylines between the main characters continues and what comes out in the end. Then I also continued with the Beings of Fire series by Tui T. Sutherland. This is a middle grade children's literature series about these five dragonets of the prophecy who have got to fulfill a destiny. Now, The Dark Secret is book four in this series. And we find ourselves in this fourth book, mostly dealing with the Nightwings. These are like kind of the, the dark ones within these various dragon, dragon kingdoms. And the story gets really intense. Again, there is a lot of violence. There is a level of violence that you have got to give a good think about if you want to give this book to a child. Me as an adult, I really loved it. And what I really love about this, these dragon books, these dragons are opinionated and they stand up against each other. They have their point of views. And yet they, especially the three, five dragonets of, of the prophecy, they have this common history with each other because they were all taken out of their own family, uh, kingdom structure and were raised in something completely new and with this they got like also new start and I think this is so important to read about also um, and it is strength it is weakness and it's such a fantastic series uh, I felt again also with regards to representation and uh, we have so strong female characters in this series as well and obviously they're all dragons so there is quite a bit of fun to be had as well mm. the other arc I finished in February is the Not So Stories. These are 15 authors of Collis who wrote their own, not just so stories, but not so stories. And these are 15 stories in reaction to Rudyard Kipling's Just So Stories. I loved reading these short stories. Really, I really, really loved them. Uh, they are very different. What I loved also is, is this representation of mother, motherhood coming in uh, within the stories because there are female authors who really made the point also brought my mother in and I think these are so so strong and important stories. 
I don't think these stories would be for children to read, but I think uh, as a short story collection and with the, uh, the subjects they deal and each of these 15 authors have their own point of view, bring in a different angle. And it was so enriching to read these short stories. So, yeah, I really would recommend it. One thing, one question that came up with me is um, I read I read just to get a general idea of what the just stories by Roderick Kipling were about. I was curious to see which of the stories these authors would choose. Yeah. What I found is, 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 is the ones that where I felt like the most intriguing ones that Roger Kipling had in his just so stories. I did not find any equivalents in these not so stories. And these are basically the, the stories towards the end of the of the book where it comes about the creation of letters, of writing. And I find the in with in, in Roger Kipling's storylines, I find this so intriguing because it is a girl and a father who invent uh, symbols for language for, for the language in order to express things, etc. And it is not the English society who invents the, 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 the letters and writing, etc. And I think that is such an interesting point, but that would be something I didn't, did not find at all within these not so stories. But then the point of this book also obviously is to counter the, the racism that is present in Rudyard Kipling's uh, short stories. And then I discovered... Uh, an older fantasy trilogy, and this is uh, The Blackbird by Frida Warrington. This is also uh, just an audiobook I discovered my local library had available, and I felt like, oh, I want to try this one out and, and see it. And I was blasted away. Wow, <laughs> what, a, what a world is revealed in these books! Absolutely amazing. And we have we have in this story, in this first book, we have three main characters setting out onto a quest. They have got to find this serpent who has been let loose onto the world and who is wreaking havoc and killing everyone and wants to basically claim power over the whole world. And it is such an enigmatic, enigmatic story. And our three heroes, two male, one female, they travel on different planes and levels of this world. And it is amazing world building. And the language in these books. Wow, I really, really loved it. And it made me think once again. It is just kind of what we have in some ways also lost with having the computers now. One of the questions I would like to ask an author who has been writing for more than yeah, let's say now 40 years before the computers became uh, available to everyone, um, how the writing process actually was. Because before the computers, you had the typewriter, you had handwriting, and that was that. And it just made me think once again, but that's just on the sidelines. Um, yeah, I absolutely love this storyline. It also holds like a whole... Um, the whole concept of good and evil in the form of, of the Eastern yin and yang in the background of the storyline. And I think Frida Barrington has done such a fantastic job in this book. Oh, I can't wait to get into the second one and see what happens then and there. Then I could not stop with Wings of Fire in February. And I got hold of the fifth book in the series as well, entitled The Brightest Night. And this is basically the conclusion of this first story arc that runs over these first five books. I think it was a phenomenal ending to these first five books and I just absolutely enjoyed it. What I said about the dark secrets applies also to The Brightest Night. There is violence of a le on a level you have got to consider as an adult if you want to give this book to a child. Uh, other than that, I think it is a fantastic storyline and in this in this fifth book, we also have some kind of representation of the humans, and it's hilarious. It's just <laughs> hilarious. I absolutely loved it. Then, on my quest for books for the February, I happened up on another audiobook. My local library has, yes, I know, I read lots of, lots and lots of audiobooks. I know. Anyway, I happened up on another trilogy that the lo my local library has available. And I was like, kind of, wow, I read the first book of this series a long, 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 long time ago. I think that was possibly 2012 or 2013. And at the time, I didn't feel interested to, to buy the, the other two books in the series. 
but I saw they were available and I remembered that they were also like about kind of not human beings and yeah I listened to this uh, second book of the series uh, it is called Trille the author is Amanda Hocking and the second book is entitled Torn and in the second book we see our main character being torn between these two kingdoms where she seems to belong in more or less equal parts and she has got to balance her the friendship she has with her brother who is not really her brother and then navigate quite a bit of power struggles with her her parents as well and it is such a, it is such an amazing book uh, for quite a while I felt just like I'm intrigued I'm intrigued where the story is going I was not really sure where, where it would be going and what would be happening but it was just this build up and then in the second half possibly of the book we have these huge plot twists and more uh, some further information is revealed and Wow, we take off. What I would also like to say is, is this book gets very, very dark. And if you have an interest into this series, it is an older YA series. Check on trigger warnings before it gets started with this series. Apart from that, absolutely amazing writing. And by the end of the book, I was like, yeah, let's bring it on. One part why I felt like I'm intrigued, but I'm really like, also, I felt like I'm so, I was so annoyed with quite of the quite a few of these uh, main characters because their reaction so often was just kind of, oh, I don't know, oh, I don't know. And I was kind of, yeah, but that is when you are a teenager, you just don't know. You have got to figure it out. You have got to make the experience for the first time. You have got to figure out who you are. And that is where this happens. And I think for this, this book is really amazing representation. And then we come to the last book I finished in February and that I finished on the last day of February which is the 29th of February and this is the second book of the Harwood spell book Thornbound by Stephanie Burgess and oh wow what a fantastic second book this is I loved it even more than the first book we have so interesting representation with how Stephanie Burgess has set up this world with basically the the females being the political part of the of the nation and the males having the magic but not being in any kind of polity having any political power and this is like a setup that has been agreed upon in the second book we see how things start to change it was such an entertaining read and then you have this fire world again coming into the family seat the family mansion of our main character and things happen and it's just so amazingly done there is also a lot of romance in this book it is human human romance mostly we have and it just was such a, fun, a fabulous read and it left me with a smile and so i ended february with a smile how did you end your february please let me know in the comments below otherwise i thank you for watching have a good time and talk to you soon bye Thank you.